We have been married for almost eight years, been together for 10 years. We have two kiddos that we adopted out of the foster system. The reason we decided to go the foster route is because, well, we can't have our own kids biologically and found that there is a ton of need and there's a lot of kids in foster care and found that there was a larger community of LGBTQ youth that aren't wanted in the foster to adopt world. So we, uh, we realized that was gonna be the best fit for us and our growing family. I play this thing. Stop, bro, quit playing with me, bro. About 30% of youth in the foster system identify as LGBTQ. Oh my God, I mean. Our daughter, unfortunately, because of her gender identity and the way she chose to express that, she wasn't wanted. And that makes me even sad just talking about it. Like, you don't, there's not a whole lot of placements for kids who are somewhere on the gender spectrum, whether they're non-binary or they're trans or anything like that. And nobody was willing to accept that. Most of my um, fostering time was spent in group homes. It was more like the kids were all treated as one big being, not just like individual people. That had gotten a lot of broken promises of, oh, you're such a good kid, I'll adopt you. Never saw me again, stuff like that. I kind of learned to like not trust stuff like that and just kind of accept my reality. <laughs> excited about my future is like probably just kind of living my life how I'm living it now. I think there's a stigma around this perceived perception that it's more difficult for same-sex couples or LGBT families to adopt unless they're an infant. One of the questions that was posed to us by someone was you don't think it's going to be weird of bringing in a young boy to your house? Yeah. For some odd reason, their mind automatically goes to a grooming type of situation. Someone said that to me. Yeah. With our son, unfortunately he had had several different placements throughout his time. I think he had around 14 different placements. My entire backstory is just moving. I was moving constantly. I've also lost a ton of friends that I really liked and a lot of other people that I really cared because I have this like switch goals every move. I make dioramas like a destroyed landscape and it just sits right there like that. So like right there, my diorama. This I just punch. There was terrible moments like where I just thought this was the end and I tried ending it all. But then also, I'm glad that I didn't do any of that. It feels way better knowing where I'm going to be in the future. It makes me proud. I guess that we're mostly the only LGBTQ family in this uh, community in this neighborhood. Whether people have said something as we're walking by as a family, I'm sure if people have said stuff, but we don't give any relevance to that. It's just keep moving forward. The majority of the time on like mainstream media or anything like that, you're hearing the dark, yeah. the negative side of these absolutely horrendous um, stories. And if that were to, to switch, I think that you would see an increase in the willingness of couples and different families wanting to do this. What prevents same-sex couples from maybe diving into foster care is like, we're always our biggest roadblocks in life. And it's finding out that we're not a perfect person, but that is really a benefit in the long run because of our yeah shared experiences because I mean if you've had a perfect childhood you had a perfect life you're not gonna have any experiences that's gonna be relatable to the kids that you bring into your home no.